Hey dudes, dudettes, and doodles! I had planned to have my next My Little Pony video out for this week, and it is coming along nicely, but I only have a couple weeks of the semester left and a lot of homework to do, so I've decided to not make any like super heavy videos uh, that I have to do a lot for uh, until I'm in the clear on that front. And oh boy, is the next My Little Pony video a heavy one. Now, I know that there is some debate online about whether or not digital art is real art. And if you're in the camp that digital art isn't real art, I just want to be perfectly clear that I do not care about your opinion at all. Introductory painting courses should let students use whatever kind of paint they want to, and that includes digital paint. Now obviously, I'm not talking about courses that are designed to teach about specific types of paint, like an oil or watercolor class. But the painting course I've been taking is mostly focused on things like color, lighting, form, and that sort of thing. And yet, we've been required to almost exclusively use acrylic paint, which is mind-boggling to me. I'm going to be going over five arguments used by my professor and fellow students as to why this is, and I aim to completely destroy them using facts and logic. Argument one, if you only use digital, you won't learn how to use acrylics. Yeah, but if you only use acrylic, you won't learn how to use digital, or oil, or watercolor, or ink, or gouache. Whatever medium you choose, you are, by definition, not choosing something else, giving you less experience in that something else. So what's the benefit of specifically using acrylic over digital, especially given an art industry that's increasingly using digital media? Why should someone be forced to work in a medium that's less relevant to what they want to do with their artistic career? One of the students who made this argument said something along the lines of, Hey, I'm a digital artist too, and I like that this course pushes me out of my comfort zone. And if that's your position, then fine, take a course specifically for a digital medium. But I don't see why anyone else should have to do something just because you personally find it helpful or interesting. Argument 2. Not everyone has access to digital art supplies. And some people don't have access to acrylics. In fairness, the school I go to does offer some free paints at the beginning of the year, but considering the pandemic and classes being increasingly taught online, you'd think they'd be more willing to allow more accessible options. Also, even if you are using the free paints, if you run out of a color, you'll probably have to buy more. And that means that if you already have a digital device, and you know how to download free art software, digital art is infinitely more accessible for you, at least monetarily speaking. The argument is even more ridiculous in the context of an online class because of, of course the students have a, a digital device because, because you see, they, they wouldn't, they, they couldn't be in the class otherwise. They, they wouldn't, they wouldn't be in, in it. Argument 3. Digital is easier so it creates an uneven playing field. I'm going to give you two scenarios and you can let me know which one you think sounds more even. In scenario 1, two artists enter a painting course that allows for any type of paint to be used. One of the artists uses exclusively acrylic paint and the other exclusively digital. They are equally skilled in their respective medium. Both artists are comfortable completing the assignments, and the traditional artist is allowed to touch up their work digitally if they feel that it would help. Scenario 2 is the same, except only acrylics are permitted. The digital artist struggles with the new medium, and therefore the class, despite actually being familiar with color theory and lighting and all that. 
And because of that, the traditional artist massively outperforms them. No, yeah, you're right. That, that scenario too. All right, so much more even. That was sarcasm. I also want to point out that the use of the term uneven playing field here is extremely misleading. Even if it's way easier to use digital, and it isn't, and I'll get to that, and even if that supposed advantage lets a student get, to be get a better grade, I can talk, that student's use of digital still wouldn't affect the other students because students are graded individually. The only way my grade would affect someone else's would be if you were grading on a curve, which you wouldn't do because you're not a vile pile of trash, right? Argument 4. This is a class for learning painting techniques. So here's a picture of the first assignment I ever did for my painting class. A self-portrait that took me approximately three and a half hours. It's okay for a first attempt at a realistic self-portrait. After I painted that, on the same day, in approximately the same amount of time, I painted this using a digital program. Which of these two pieces do you think more accurately reflects my understanding of color, light, shadow, form, composition, etc, etc? The second one, of course because I didn't spend the whole time struggling with the unfamiliar texture and behavior of the paint. I was actually able to demonstrate the skills we were being graded on. But of course, the digital version could not be submitted. Now, all semester, I don't remember once being graded on technique. Color theory stuff and form and replication, definitely, but technique? Uh, mentioned, talked about, yes, but not really graded, except for a couple times when we had to put a wash down first, I think? But anyway, any painting technique, from washes to bry dressing to impasto or whatever you want, can be replicated digitally. In fact, you could judge a digital piece by how well the technique was replicated. Plus, it could be argued that it's easier to grade technique when the piece is digital. I use a program called Ibis Paint X which automatically saves a time-lapse version of the drawing, which a professor could use to see how a student implements a wash or any other technique. They could also watch the process of color mixing, which is much more relevant to the class I'm taking. Both of these things mean that a professor can more easily judge a student's process, which is especially important in an online class where the prof can't walk around behind students as they work and they can get a close look at the process that they can't really get from a video of a student using a physical medium. That's why I said earlier that digital art doesn't really give a significant advantage. Having to show mixing from a palette and creative use of brush settings kinda cancels out any advantage digital might have. Argument 5. Digital media makes plagiarism easier. No, it doesn't. Ah, yes, funny YouTube gag. Here's an almost word-for-word -word reenactment of the conversation my professor and I had on this point. A reenactment with Cartoon Hippie. You see, Oak, one of my past students handed in a digital painting that had been traced from a reference photo. Oh, well, in that case, I can send you a time-lapse of the creation process so that you know I didn't trace. Oh no, I, I can tell if a painting has been traced just by looking at it. I- but- 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 I- It's worth noting that because it's a digital course, students are supposed to send in a reference photo so that the prof can grade accuracy. It- it literally- it, it isn't a problem in any way. Oh, and do you remember how I said we are required to use acrylics almost exclusively? Yeah, I said that because for one of our projects in this painting course, we were allowed to use collage if we wanted to. 
I'm thinking of making a series where I show and explain all the projects that I've done this year at art school. I'm really passionate about free education, so I'm really looking forward to it. Um, please subscribe if you want to see that, or tell your art friends about it, or just your broke friends looking to learn something new. Um, thanks again to my donors over on buymeacoffee.com. Um, if you want to help me out, I would really appreciate it if you could throw me a couple bucks. Thanks a lot. Um, and I'll see you later.